If you love building sites in Divi, you know that it can make the development process quite simple. However, every now and then you come up with an idea that isn't a standard feature in Divi. And in order to make it happen, you have to be a little creative. So today I'm gonna to show you how to toggle sections and rows by utilizing Divi button modules. But first, if you're new, my name is Michelle and I like talking about design, marketing, and freelancing. So if you find the information helpful, there are many ways to support my channel. You can always give the video a like and of course subscribe if you enjoy this content. Now, a couple of quick notes before we jump into the tutorial. First, I want to say that this does require JavaScript. So if that angers you or scares you, just be aware. I know that some folks have quite strong opinions on this. I will show you how to incorporate it. Also, while I can adjust JavaScript to make it work for me, I'm not necessarily an expert. So if you're watching this and you're like, I have a better way to do this, totally cool. If you wanna share alternative solutions in the comments, feel free to do so. So what I did was I was scouring the internet to try and find the solution that I was looking for. And what I found came really close to what I wanted, but I did make a few tweaks and I adapted it so that it would work for what I needed. So I do want to give credit to the original blog that I found. So I'm going to put a link in the description of the video if you do want to check that out. So let's get started by taking a look at what we're about to build. So here's a look at what we're building today. So I've got this layout. It is all about sustainable textiles. This is just a demo. All of the images are from Canva and all of the text was generated from chat GPT. So I just wanted to build out this page so that you get an idea of what I mean by toggling sections and rows. So the first thing that you see here, I actually have five buttons. These are probably not your normal looking buttons because they're heavily styled and I can show you a quick look at what that looks like to make these buttons a little bit different. Any Divi button module will work. I mean, you don't even have to style it. The beauty of what I'm trying to show you is that you can really customize everything to your heart's content. So if I say I want to learn more about organic cotton and I click on it, then this whole section appears on organic cotton, why I should choose it. And then you can put whatever you want in here. You can build it out to your heart's desire. So I also put a little link to go back. Maybe we want to learn about hemp, same thing tencel, recycled polyester, you probably get the idea by now, and then linen. And so that is just one of the sections. My idea for this, this could be a really cool thing to do for uh, restaurant menus if you're building those out. So if you have a really long menu and you want to toggle different sections between maybe it's, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, gluten-free menu, all of that, that would be a really cool idea. You could do something really creative with FAQs if you wanted to add some extra spice to those sections. So just some ideas there on how you could use this. Now, you might not have an instance where you want to use all five. So I also have one other example to show you. Let's say you have a section that you don't really want to put all the copy up front, but if people really want to dive deeper and learn more, let's say you build out an extra section where you can toggle it. So this button would expand some more content. And then if you didn't want it to, if you didn't want to see it all, you could just close that up too. Uh, not saying that that's a great use case on this demo, but I just wanted to show you how it functions. I will say there's a couple things. If you remember, I mentioned that I am not a expert at JavaScript. So one of the things that I would love is like, if I click this again, that it would close, I could not figure out how to do that with the five buttons. And so if there is anyone out there that wants to create a solution for that, uh, be my guest or just, you know, drop it in the comments or give a link to a code pen or something so that we could see how that might function. Now I will say there's only four steps to really making this happen. So I'm going to enter into the visual builder in a second. But all of the code that you're going to see or that I'm implementing, you can grab that from my blog. So I'll have a companion blog with the link in the description. You can click there and then you'll be able to copy and paste the code for yourself and then try this out for yourself. Another thing, if you would rather just download this template and you know upload it into your Divi environment and see how it really functions and try to get a better handle of it, that's cool too. I'm going to have it in my online shop. You could grab it for five bucks. Just another way to support the channel if you uh, would rather modify this than start from scratch. So 
just some options for you there. So let's dive into the Visual Builder to see how this functions. Okay, like I mentioned, these are all button modules. I can prove it by clicking on it. Uh, you have your button. You would not put a link in this case because of the what we're doing with the JavaScript. So the only thing that you need to do up front is just have the text that you want there. Now, like I mentioned, this is heavily styled. And so I did a lot of extra stuff when it comes to the button styles. So of course, I, I modified all of my button text. And then the button background is where I kind of went nuts. So I have this image in the background of the button and then I do have a hover state so that it, when you roll over it, it has that nice little color overlay. So those are all things that you can experiment and explore. But if you want it to look like a regular button, that's cool too. I will mention that I did put a color in there and then I took the image and then multiplied it so that it was just a little bit darker so that the text would stand out a little bit more. And then of course, when I wanted that square sort of look and feel to it, then the only other thing that I adjusted was the spacing. And so you can see that there was some padding that was put all around. So that's just a quick look at how I styled it. So really, once you have the button looking the way that you want it to, the next step, step one of this process is you need to put some classes on your buttons. And so you'll just go to the advanced tab, you click CSS ID and classes, and then I've got MCT button one and then the MCT button close. So you're gonna label these for each individual button. So if this is button one, that's button two, button three, button four, button five. I will say if you wanna change the names to make it easier for yourself, go for it. Just know that if you're changing the names then you're gonna need to adjust the JavaScript too to make sure that it works. So then the next thing that we do once we've got all of our buttons labeled, remember they need two classes each with the difference being the number, um, which is going to correlate to the content that we want it to show. So the next thing I did was I built out a section and the section is what's going to have those CSS classes on it. And so if I go into the section settings and hit advanced, then I've got the class. There's two classes here. I've got the element that we're gonna show and then the number of the element. So this has its own style for each section. And then we've got to number it so that we know which one it's gonna show in the JavaScript. So you want these to coordinate. You know, button number one is gonna show element number one. Button number two is gonna show element number two. And so within this section, you know, I got rid of the padding at the top and then I just put a full width row in here so that I could kind of span across the page. And then I just put in a few more rows. You could put whatever content you want in this with however much or little that you need to. So this was just an example of showing you, you know, putting another row in with an, an image and some text. And then I did another row that has the jump link to go back to the top. So this button here has a link to materials and that is just an anchor link that I've put on. So if I go back up to this section here and I look at the advanced tab, I can see that I put that CSS ID in there for materials so that I can jump back to the top so that people, you know, have an easy way. Because if you're going to put a lot of content in there, then it makes probably sense to put a button so that they can get back quickly to the top. Okay, so once you label everything, once you build everything out, you know, we've got just one section for the first button with as many rows and modules that you want. This creates another section that, you know, taking a look at that, the same thing, element, and then element number two, and it keeps going. And so you're just gonna build out your entire sections and pages until you are happy with your content and then the next thing that you need to do, once you have everything labeled, you're gonna wanna put a couple of classes in. So I added the CSS to this page. So there's a couple of sections and I'll, I'll talk through those, but these first three styles up here are relevant to, to these five button toggles. So I've got that, the MTC element, so it's not gonna show, because you don't want them to show when you load the page, you only want them to show when you when the button is clicked on. So that's basically what that is 
doing uh, with those first three styles. So you're going to need to put the CSS somewhere. If you don't put it on the page, you could always put it within your theme options. That's a fine place to put it too. Uh, and then we're going to need to add the JavaScript. So I'm going to show you again, when I was mentioning theme options, if you're unfamiliar, you go to Divi theme options and then in the integration tab is where we're going to put the JavaScript. So this first, uh, for the multi-button toggle, and again, you could grab this code with the link in the description, uh, you need to go through and adjust this. If you are changing the amount of buttons or if you're wanting to change the class names, which you're welcome to do. Just you have to know that in order to make it work well, you need to make sure that you don't have a character out of place because if you do, then it's just not gonna work. So it's just like, it's one of those things where you just gotta be very careful and make sure that you're doing it uh, pretty thoroughly. So as you're looking, it's pretty simple. So we've got like the first button, button number one, and then we're just telling it what to show and hide. So. In the instance of button number one, you're going to hide two, three, four, and five, and you're only going to show one. So if you've got the second button, you're going to hide one, three, four, and five, and show two. And it, it keeps going. You can get the idea. So you do it for all five buttons, and then it's got some extra classes down here um, telling it to slide down or up. So it's a slide toggle. Another thing that I would have loved, which again, not a JavaScript expert, I would have loved if I could get it to like fade in and out or just something. Sometimes I thought like the sliding seemed a little harsh, but it was like if there's other transitions out there that could feel a little less dramatic, I, I think that would have been um, a great solution. So if you have a solution out there that you want to share with everybody, that would be amazing. So this is where you're going to paste in, unless unless you have an, an alternative solution, you, this works too though. So if you wanna paste it into the integration section for the head of your site, the last thing that you need to get this to work. And so if I exit out again, save, we've got all of that in place, we can see that it switches out and slides up, like I mentioned. Okay, let's take a look at the next section. So if you just had one section, one button that you wanted to toggle up and down, how does that work? It's extremely similar. Uh, I'll enable the visual builder once again. We'll scroll to the bottom. And so the only thing that we've got here, again, the button has your text, does not have a link. In the advanced section, we've got two classes. We've got toggle button one and toggle button closed. And then you need to identify the section that you're building out and hit advanced. And then you would put toggle content and toggle content one. So those are the two classes that I went with. And then again, you would wanna make sure that you had the appropriate CSS and these three on the bottom would correspond to that. So I've just got the toggle button closed and open state, and then the display none to um, not show the content when it loads. And then you just gotta add the JavaScript. And so again, that script is available on the blog. So you can just grab this, you'll have toggle button one and then the toggle content one. And then it is just basically doing the same thing. And it's got the, the open and close state for the toggle class. So this one is a surefire way to get it to open and close. Apologies for not being able to figure out the other uh, multi-button option opening and closing, because I do think it would be great to, ha to have it shut down completely if you didn't want to read it anymore, but not a huge deal if you can't. And that's really all there is to it. So it's just a lot of labeling things and inserting the code. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can leave those in the comments. Again, feel free to download a copy of this layout and play with it in your own Divi site. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.